Well, try that again. Um, so uh, today's um, material is largely drawn from uh, chapter uh, 16, final little bits. I, I had asked you to uh, to read it through originally through the examples, and and of course you've read more um, now. Um, plus, uh, we have uh, some big material from chapter 17. Um, so uh, I'd like to go over the remaining material from chapter 16, um, some of which I, I thought was um, quite eye-opening, and, um, and then dive into chapter 17. Um, so with uh, chapter 16, um, the final section really uh, discussed uh, the diversity of the diversity with which initial and terminal objects um, present in, in in categories, the, the different different flavor that they have uh, in in different categories. Um, and uh, she specifically went through um, monoids, for example, uh, sets and posets, um, uh, monoids and groups. Um, and then there was a discussion of sort of this idea of um, looking across categories and, and, and thinking about how some of the same objects look in different categories. Or uh, there's also you know, a thread of, of looking at the extreme objects um, in a given category um, um, and how they differ be between categories. Um, uh, and uh, she, she further uh, commented in the final section on um, uh, other universal properties. Um, and this idea of whether functors preserve initial and terminal objects when they perform a mapping, they honor composition. They have to, by definition. They honor identity, both those reflections of honoring structure. Um, but in, in other times, we, we look for functors to honor different types of structure. As we'll see, we'll soon see monoidal categories where we have a Kind of monoidal operation that must be honored by by the structure. Um, so, sort of hint hint of that when mapping between monoids. Um, uh, but we'll see a another sort of um, examination of this. Um, uh, but then you know she also talks about this value of of um, distilling. Um, saying that, look, if if there's a construction that's that's natural, um, that's sort of self-evident or canonical, that just sort of the elegant, clear, elegant, manifest way to do to approach something, that it, it generally is characterized by a universal property. There's something that is special about it. It's the best of in in a, in, a, in some certain light. Um, and um and she says you know um uh that that if a category has a good universal or, or um but in category theory if it has a good universal property it shows it as an internal logic of its own it's not just that the utilitarian we cooked up to serve a purpose but rather it grows organically from the strong roots of abstract mathematics and sort of this this thing that's just yearning to be a it's just a sort of natural um, um, type of of uh, of object that you know anyone who really thought seriously about this would would end up uh, under understanding or or discovering uh, eventually. Um, so uh, you know this this notion of universal properties is kind of highlighting. Um, key 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 concepts and and indeed we we see them 
for all these incredibly useful concepts, these universal properties. Um, I've sort of rattled off a bunch, exponential objects, initial object, a terminal object, these, these uh, ends and co-ends, these co products and co-products, limits and co-limits. Um, uh, but there's many others uh, besides these. And um, they have these sort of unique features that make them distinguished in, in some sense. Um, but I, I did want to talk about initial and terminal objects and how they appear across different categories, just to make sure we that we're clear about this. Um, and I think part of our goal was to show that initial and terminal objects, while they may exist in many, many categories, they're not guaranteed to, but while many categories have them, um, they can look very different at, at, a, at a detailed level. And one of the points she makes um, is that, look, even in, she notes that a, a large number of categories are basically kind of elaborated sets. Um, they're sets with some sort of added structure. Uh, can you give me some examples of, of categories that are these kind of elaborated sets? Uh, post sets? Yeah, post sets are an elaborated set. They're they have a set of elements, but the elements are not just jumbled. They're not just, you know, any old elements arranged in any old way. They're, they have an ordering between them. What what's another example of a of a um, uh, of a, a sort of generalized set category? It has elements. Um, they may not; those elements don't. I'll give you a hint: they don't have to be ob captured as objects. They could be captured as morphisms. Um, but it has added structure. It has some logic of its own, where those elements are have some orderliness to them, some sort of regularities to them, some relationships to them. What's, what does that sound like? A what? A set of numbers. Okay, a set of numbers. We see a set and of numbers. That's in multiple. For example, uh -huh. 30 that we had uh, one, okay. one, two, yeah, yeah. subset of 30. That's true. That's a... That's an example, though, of a post set because it, it's... Yeah, this uh, is an example of a set. Yeah, yeah. Of, it is of, exactly. of a post set. Yeah. But but there's something else that you... I thought you were saying natural numbers. And natural numbers can be expressed by what sort of construct that we've seen? I'll give give you a hint. Uh, a monoid? A monoid. A monoid. Um, and specifically, it's a free monoid. A free monoid can express like natural numbers under addition. So you have zero, one, two, three, four, and you can add one and one, you get two, one and two, you get three, et cetera. Um, it's free in the sense that you're not repeating any of them except as required by like associativity. Um, and I think we'll come back to that at a later, later point. But that's another example of something with a set with structure. Um, and, and there's and there's some other ones, but I, I'd like to talk about some of these. So, so her, I think uh, Eugenia Cheng's point is that um, if we have sets and functions, which are just plain old, I'm not going to say it that way because it sounds like post set. I, I, sort of a set without structure. What's the initial object in a set without structure? Do you remember? What's the initial object there? Yeah, the empty empty set. It has a kind of vacuous morphism to every other set. Not, not every element of every other set, to every other set. There's a vacuous one because there's nothing to do, right? Yeah, good. Um, What's the terminal object in the category of sets and functions? Elephant. Uh, and Elephant. <laughs> or That's 30, right. for example, in subset. Yeah, any any uh any one set with element. one element yeah. with a single element. And this is why a lot of the time for 
it's it's interesting. Category theorists are are very particular about some things, but I've noticed like. Like when it when it comes to just like collapsing single objects and on down into one object and something called fin set, set of finite state. It's like, yeah, 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 just just do it. It's it's really not like you don't even say it. Of course, of course you do it. It's like it's it's so trivial a thing, it doesn't change any structure. Yeah, you 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 consider them the same object point. Um and um so if we consider like elephant as look, it's just renaming from you know person or lion or stone or something like that it's just a relabeling so so yeah so uh, a, a set a singleton set a set with a single element is a is a um, terminal object why why is it terminal can you remind us why is that terminal in the category sets and functions think about any other set say the set one two three why is there more why is there just one morphism from that to the terminal object, which is what a terminal object requires, right? For a terminal object, every it's unique every object in the category has to have unique morphism to it. Just one. For every one. Can't have two, just one. Why is why is there just one morphism to the to the singleton set, this terminal set and this terminal object? Because there's only one possible mapping to a set with one element. Yeah, there's no choice, right? What are you going to map one to? Uh, one. What are you going to map two to? Uh, one. What are you going to map three to? Uh, I got no choice. One, right? It's, it's like zero choice. So, so there's only one possible function mapping to. It. As as you yeah. mentioned, we had we have to uh, have uh, just one choice. We have. Yeah, to. we we yeah. have we have just one choice. That's right. Don't get that confused with in, in in set in particular. So it happens in set that you have morphisms out of the terminal object for every element of the other set, you know, that it goes to, right? So if in terms of how it maps to uh one, two, three, well, there's one where it maps the one to one, which one where it maps it to two, which one where it maps it to three, there's three of them. One for each of the elements in that set into which it's heading. That's but but that's not really a property of it being the terminal object. What's what's important about it being the terminal object is for every object in that set, there's a morphism into a single unique morphism into it. And of course, these unique morphism from itself to itself, which is what? What's the unique morphism from itself to itself? What morphism is always there? The identity. 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 Yeah. Um, okay, so that's sets of functions. How about post sets so what's what's initial for a post set like what post set so remember okay post sets remember mapping map mappings between post sets now we're we're thinking about if we have a category of post sets each of these each of these objects is a post set in that category what object what particular post set would be would be an initial post set. It would have a mapping to every other post set, a un single unique mapping to every post set in that category. Which one is it? Including to itself. Initial. Yeah. What? Which? Which one is it that's initial? What? What post set? Which particular post set would be initial? What would be in that post set? I I don't understand your for example in uh subset of numbers that uh for example is uh, one is initial and the third is uh, terminal yeah because uh, from uh, this uh, um, there is a uh there, uh, there, uh, there is a morphism from the initial objects to any other objects and is unique. Uh, my means is just one morphism from it, uh, from each. Yeah, but but we're okay. So so I understand. I think what you may be confused about, but remember, um, we are going up a level from that. So uh, it is true that um, we have. 
uh, and I, I'm going to have the some empty set, for this. example. Well, OK, here, here, let's I, I want to walk you walk you through that uh, here. OK, um, small mathematical structures here. Here we go. Um, let's go. Let's go back and and remember with our our small mathematical structures. So no, no, I think you're you're thinking about like posets like here's a particular poset. Can you see my screen here? Can you see this? Yes. Here's a particular post set, right? Yeah. Um, An empty set is the uh, initial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in, in, in this particular one, the empty set object is representing a specific post set. And why am I not finding my slides with lots of uh, post sets? Okay. So I, th I think there may be, maybe I have more post sets here. Sorry. I, you know, this is like, um, this here, here are some more post sets, right? Here's another post set, right? Yeah. There's a post set, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. The one um, is initial, and the 30 a, is terminal. In this category, it's true. One is initial and 30 is, is terminal. But what I'm asking for, and it's important to recognize in category theory, you have this oh, need to pop up a little. Um, so what I'm asking instead is what... It's not within this post set. What is initial and one is final? What is terminal? Um, or here, what's initial? <clears throat> what's terminal? That's an interesting question, but that's not what I'm asking. What I'm actually asking is um, in the category of post sets, in other words, um, where each of these objects is a post set, a partially ordered set. Now we're zooming out. This might be the post set with this um, in it. And this might be the post set, you know, that represents this. Um, this might be a post set that looks like this thing here. Um, do you remember this idea? We could have a category where all these things are just dots. They're just infinitesimal dots. Now, they represent it, but we don't have to worry um, a ton about how to describe each thing inside here. But the mappings here, what do these mappings represent? Do you remember? I'll give you a hint. What do those represent? What are those structure? Remember when we have a category, we have these objects, the morphisms between them are structure preserving mappings between them. What's the structure preserving mapping between post sets? What is it? Do you remember? Function. Yeah, but it's not just any function. It can't be a function which scrambles things like maps yeah, this yeah. way down here. Yeah, exactly. It needs to be a structure preserving one. It has to be a function between these that honors the ordering, right? That honors the structure. Where things over here that if this is if A is above B here, the map of A is above map of B. You see that? Yeah. And what is this thing called? What are those mappings called? Monotone maps? Monotone maps. They are maps between two po posets that if look, if the if one object is less than another in the source, where met less may mean it's a divisor of that other, less may mean it's a subset of the other, less may mean it's it's less in a numeric sense. It's mapped to something. So if P is less than P prime in the source, right? And over here, then it's mapping in the target is less than the mapping of the other one, right? Do you see that? It's honoring this mapping. It's preserving this mapping. Remember that idea? Do you remember that idea? That yeah. it, it's honoring this mapping? It's making sure, it, it, it's not reproducing it exactly it's collapsing a bunch of these down but it's honoring it it's not contradicting it by scrambling things and making this way down here or something like that by you know putting this one here and this one here reversing it in some way it's honoring it it's respecting it it may map them down to the same point but it's honoring it. do you remember this idea of a monotone map hmm? so Things that are smaller here become things that are smaller over here. Things that are 
you know, smaller here becomes things that are smaller here. Uh, so it's not flipping anything. It's it's respecting these orderings. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What I'm saying is that each of these morphisms is a monotone map from this to this. It, this is one, some particular, some particular post set. This is some particular post set, and this is a particular structure preserving map. One of the morphisms between, them. in general, there'll be many that map it, right? Here, this one could have mapped this one up to here, right? Um, and still honored this structure. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that? This one, instead of mapping over to here, it could have mapped it up to here and still be a structure preserving map from the left to the right. Do you agree with that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we have, oh, here we have each of these is a post sag. And there could be many maps that represent these different specific structure preserving mappings. Okay. Um, so let me ask this. In this category, where the objects are posets and the morphisms or monotone maps between them. Well, let me ask what what are the what are the um, identity morphisms here? You tell me. What are identity morphisms? The monotone mapping that maps it to itself again. Yeah, it maps to itself. Um, and, and indeed. And does does this mapping composition make sense? If you map this one here in a in a monotone way, and this one here in a monotone way, that you can compose them and get the resulting monotone map. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. 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 Um. Okay, so in this category, so this is a category, what, which, what would be the initial object in this category? It's some monotone map. What monotone map is it? Uh, the, the empty post set with no elements? The empty post set with no elements. That's exactly right. Why does it have only one? Remember, the distinguishing feature of an initial object is that it has what? What? Why do we call it initial? Because it has a. It has one morphism to every yeah. other element. Yeah, and to yeah, every and every unique. object. Yeah, that's right, and it's unique. Yeah, it's unique morphism to every object, right, including itself. So. If we had an empty post set, would it have a single structure preserving mapping onto every other post set? Uh, yeah, because there's no there's no structure to preserve. There's just nothing. There's, there's nothing to map. So yeah, yeah, we have to do, and we have to choice just this one. Yeah, there's none. There's no, no, no thing. Okay, Nothing. so so that's good that that you understand that. What will be a terminal object here? What will be a terminal post set? A post set that what would a terminal post set look like? That every other object has just one morphism to it. What would that look like? The, the the post set with a single item and only the identity morphism. Yeah, post set with only a single item in it, and um, yeah, it's going to have an identity morphism. Could they it all have mean... more than just the identity morphism and still work? Well, remember that. So good, great question. Could it have more than one morphism? 
But remember, a post set is a very specific type of category. Do you remember that? How many, yeah. if we consider two objects here, how many morphisms are between them? I tell you, it's it's really limited. Because all we're one. saying, yeah, it can only be, yeah. well, one or what? Like, two, but like the, no, yeah. One or, what is there between zero. this and this? Zero. There can be zero between from A to B. This one is zero from here to here, but there's one from here. It can only be one or zero. It's like asserting that this is less than or equal to that in some sense. Yeah. In this case, it's just a subset of it. It's just an assertion, right? And that's the relationship. And so it's either there or it's not there. So there can't really be more than one um, because there can only be one, and that's the identity. And what, does that make sense? Let's suppose this thing on the right were just a single dot. And yeah, there's an identity dot to itself. Suppose, suppose we could like, ah, I'm tempted to do this. And, ah, um, you know, um, eh, it's probably not going to be worth it. But, you know, if, if we were to kind of blot out, out, out black spot, if we were to, you know, blot out this, um, like that, um, th this isn't great, but, uh, I think you, you understand the, the gist of where I'm getting. And we were to blot out this guy here. So all we were to have is this. And everything map, would there be more than one mapping? Would there be any choice involved? What, what would this mapping have to look like if we had only one object here? What would it have to look like? There's nothing here now, there's nothing here. So where would this object have to go? Where would middle. it have to be mapped to? The middle, this one, where, where would it have to go? Middle. The middle, right? And this, this morphism here, what would it have to map to? Because remember, functors map, map morphism to morphism. So what would it have to map to? What's the only map morphism it can map to? Identity. Identity. What would this morphism map to? Identity. Identity, Identity. too. Yeah, yeah. So how many how many mappings are there from, from this guy to the single one? Is there any choice in the matter? No, there's just one. No, no just, just one. one. We have to choose just one. And what do we call an object that has one and exactly one mapping from every object in the category? We call it a what? Terminal. A terminal. Yeah, so a, a terminal one, any anyone that has just one thing is terminal. Now that one thing could be, Larissa, what could that one thing be named? Elephant. <laughs> it could be named elephant. <laughs> That's exactly right. Or it could be named mammoth, or it could be named cuberonis, or it could be called mastodon, um, but, um, or gompothier. But but really, they're, they're all the same. And they're just isomorphic to each other, so... It's, it's just potato, potato, tomato, tomato. It's just the same same thing. They're all unique, uniquely isomorphic to each other. Okay. And uh, if we have them uh, different, uh, if we have uh, some base, all of them are the uh, same. If 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 they're there, uh, uh, if there uh, there are uh, some ways, uh, all of them are the uh, same. If there are some ways, right. I didn't. Yeah. yeah, for example, from the uh, the uh, the start to the uh, to the uh, uh, end oh, yeah. point. Yeah. If... right, right. If there are multiple paths, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. right. They're all the same. Um, uh, uh, so, well, okay. Here they're exactly the same. I'm sorry. In this, these are different. These can be different morphisms. There can be different morphisms from here to here. Um, in general between posets. So in this category, in this category of poset, so in a in a given poset, all multiple paths that from source to target are all the same. They have to be. There's only one or zero. Um, so if you have multiple ones, they're the same. Here, we have mappings between posets, and there can be many mappings between posets. Remember here we said, well, this is one mapping between these posets. But give me another mapping I, I mentioned between these posets. Give me another mapping that could be, it'll be a legitimate mapping, a monotone map. 
that honors this structure? What would it, what would another map be? Anyone? Uh, collapse everything down to the middle like we did with the- Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, would be a perfectly good one. Or collapse everything to this upper one, right? Or collapse everything to the bottom one. Or this one, it's the same, maybe it's the same as this, except this one goes there, right? Or it's the same as this uh, shown here, except this one goes to the middle. Or, you know, it's the same as this shown, except this one goes down here. And um, and this one still goes to the middle. Or this one and this one both go down here, otherwise the same. It, there's lots of mappings in general between these post sets, and they're not, not all the same. Um, so these are mappings between morphisms between post sets. Mo these are monotone maps between them. And here you can have multiple paths that are different. Mm -hmm. Do you get that, Nona? Yeah. Are you yeah. Comfortable with that? Okay. Yeah. So so we talked about post sets here, but here's the question. So you had mentioned two examples of sets with structure. One is a post set. Great. How about another one? I'm going to say monoids. So you say, wow, well, what, what, what are we dealing with 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 a monoid? Where do I have a picture of a of a nice monoid? Here's a here's a monoid. Okay. So you remember monoids, right? Remember these monoids? Remember that? Yeah. These, remember these? So this yeah. is the dot dot. This is the free monoid. This is like mod two monoid. Remember that? If we composed one with one, what would we get in this monoid? Hmm? Just trying to make sure you remember it. We Identity one to one. Yeah, we get the zero, and, and if we did zero composed with one, we get one and so on, right? And if we composed identity with identity, what would we get? Identity with identity, we would get what? Identity. Identity, identity yeah. Okay, so let's, so so remember these monoids, right? We're inside a given monoid category, that's good. Just like before, we were inside a given pre-order. Yeah, that, that's all fine, but we zoom out. Remember, we zoomed out from looking inside pre-orders to a category of pre-orders, or each one of these was just a dot, an infinitesimal dot. And we had mappings between those dots that are monotone maps as these morphisms. Here, we're going to zoom out from each of these individual monoids looking inside of it. And we're going to take put aside our microscope and put on our telescope. And now we've each of those monoids is just a dot. And the mappings between monoids are what? What are mappings between monoids? Remember, whenever you have a category, the mappings are structure-preserving mappings between them. And what are structure-preserving mappings between monoids? They are what? It's with an H. Monoid what? Homomorphism. Homomorphism, yeah. Do you, do you remember that idea? That, that it was a mapping that was consistent and honored the structure. Remember this idea? We couldn't willy-nilly map it over. But like we could map from the free monoid. Ah, this thing should have a dot, dot, dot. Uh, hey, come on. Where, I need my dot, dot, dot. Uh, um, okay. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't have a dot, dot, dot. Anyway, um, there's a dot, dot, dot here, the free monoid. Um, and, and each of these morphisms maps into a morphism here, but we couldn't do it willy-nilly, right? We couldn't do it in just some random way. Identity has to map, map to what? Identity. 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 Zero. Okay, good. Yeah, oh, exactly. And one here, one way to do this mapping, one, one way to do this map, you would map everything here on the left to just identity here, right? You know, like, um, um, actually, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's that's wrong. No, no, that's, uh, no that would be a, a monoid uh, homomorphism. Yes, we, we could do that. But another way is to map like zero onto zero, one onto one, two onto what? Zero this? identity. One to zero, three yes. onto what? 
uh, we divided two groups, odd and even. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So that would be a monoid homomorphism. It honors this in the sense that you can either add things over here, you know, one plus two equals three, um, and then map over, um, three maps over to one, um, or you could map one over here to one, two over here would map to what? Zero. Zero then, identity. Yeah, and then you'd add them over in this category, you compose zero and one and you get what? One. Get one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a modern homomorphism. It would map the even to the to um, zero odd to one. Okay, so here, um, that, that's an example of monoid homomorphism. And, and each arrow here represents, by goodness, a monoid homomorphism. And in general, it's going to be several between a given monoid, right? Like, as I said, like a trivial monoid homomorphism will be like we map everything in this free monoid onto zero. And we can either add things here and then map over and get zero. Or we can map over and get zero and zero and add them over here and get zero. And so it's completely consistent. So in general, it's going to be multiple morphisms here um, uh, between these monoids, Mul multiple mo monoid homomorphisms. Um, do, do you agree with that in general? Yeah. OK, but here's the question. What is the what is the initial monoid in this category? What would an initial monoid look like? One that has a single unique map to every other monoid. What would that look like? What would that look like, folks? A single unique map to every other monoid. In other words, often you look, sometimes you look for something that is no choice. Now, by by reference to set and post set sets and post sets, what did, what did the initial object look like for set? Do you remember? Larissa said it in the chat. What was it? Empty set. Empty set, right? Okay. Could you have a monoid with no object in it? I'm double checking the definition of it to see if you can. <laughs> and the no, answer you, can't. you need can't. exactly one element. You need at least one element. Yeah. So you so you can't have an empty one. Let's suppose you had one with one. Could be identity. Ah, yeah. So, th so that it would have identity morphism in it. So it would be this. It would just be the identity element. How many mappings are there possible from that to to ah? Let's say uh, to start simple onto this monoid. How many mappings are there from a uh, a monoid consisting of just the identity. Imagine it just had over here. Any, how many mapping, how many monoid homomorphisms are there that are possible? Only one, because you have to map the identity to the identity. You have to map the identity to the identity. That's a rule. Like that's a, that's what a functor has to do, right? It has to map identity to identity. That's basics of structure preservation. How about now to our to a free monoid where you know you have one and one and two and one and two and three, all that. How many how many mappings are there possible from just a monoid consisting of just the identity? How many monoto how many uh, monoid homomorphisms are there into this one with all this structure? They would yeah, have to map to the identity. 
And they'd all have to just go to the end. There's yeah. only one. There's one from that monoid with the just the identity. It has to go to this. This, this could be the richest category in the world that could have all sorts of wonderful morphisms in it and mon neat monoid rules could capture plus and zero as the identity or plus, you know, times and one as the identity or whatever. But there's only one mapping from that single object monoid with, with just the identity and it has to go to the identity. So what do we call an object in a category that is exactly one mapping. Well, let me ask, it's, what, what's, what's its monoid homomorphism to itself? How many of them does it have to itself? Mapping from itself to itself. How many possibilities mm -hmm. are there? Just is there one. any choice? Just one. No. Yeah. So what do we call an object that is exactly one morphism to every other object in the category? We call it an... Initial. Initial object. It's initial. Okay. Okay. Now, how about the terminal object in this category? What is in, in the category set? What was the terminal object? Do you remember? A set with one element. That was one element. What could that element be, for example, Louisa? Elephant. Elephant is a, is a good element. It could be, for example, maybe even elephant. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, so that was in yeah. set. In, in post set, so partially ordered sets, what was the terminal? What was the terminal object? Uh, I have a question for the what terminal is? objects in the sure. uh, post set. Uh, can we say, for example, in the post set, is the uh, is the greatest element? Well, uh, the element is greater than, uh, for example, the other element. Well, but remember, we're, we're zoomed out from a particular. So within a given post set, mm -hmm. a great question, uh, Nora. Within a given post set we might say that the terminal is the greatest one, right? Where what we mean by greater is based on the particular thing. Maybe it's the one that is divided by everything else, or maybe it's the one that has everything else as a subset of it or, um, or, or whatever. Um, here, it might literally be, it's greater than everything else, uh, right? Um, uh, that's within a post set. You could say that absolutely, but if we're dealing with the but category, all of post set of, has of, has a greatest elements in this. Every every post set, well, does every post set have a single greatest element? That's a good question. Does every post set have no. a single greatest element? Could you imagine a post set that doesn't have a single greatest element? We have the example where we're like doing the natural numbers and every number would be greater ah. than the number before it, but we can go on to infinity, right? Good, good. And in fact, um, I don't know if you remember, but um, uh, in talking about initial and terminal, there were several reasons we might not have them. One is we might have a branching, remember that? Where we have um, two things, which are greater than everything else, for example, but they're not, they have no relationship to each other. So they're not, there's not a single terminal object. Um, there's no, there's no terminal object. There's no object that for every object in the category has a morphism to it. Um, these ones, um, excuse me, the, these ones uh, uh, did, uh, uh, sorry, these ones did, um, this one had a, had, but like this one, um, if, if we just took this one, if we didn't have dot, dot, dot here, this would not be, this would not have a terminal object, right? Because there's no object that from every other object or from every object, it has a morphism to itself. There's none from here to here. And this one is not terminal because there's none from here to here. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Thank 
Yeah, sure. So in the so so great. Uh, thank you so much for putting that forward, uh, Nona. That's awesome. Um, so in in a category of of uh, these these post ads or pre orders, um, I'm kind of glossing over the difference there. Um, we um, what would a, a terminal object look like? Could you give what would a what would a terminal? So we're looking for a post set that is a single unique map to it by uh, from every other post set. What would that look like? Anyone? It, it would be one where there's no options for where things can map to. Good. That's the great. That's a great insight a great basis for thinking it through that's a a key understanding we're looking for something where there's no choice there's only one it can only be one and what would be a post uh, what would be a a post set where there's only one Remember we said it before what would be a post set where there's only where it one? only has one object only has one object yeah now, now let's go to monoids. What would be what would a monoid be? Remember, we said the initial monoid, the initial monoid, the initial object in this category of monoids was what? Do you remember you said it earlier? It has one one mapping from it. What would that be? Remember, we said no matter how fancy the category was, it mapped into there was only one. What was that initial oh, yeah. one? It just oh, had. Didn't. It just had identity, right? That would be the yeah. initial object in the category, whoa, the category of monoids. What's the terminal object in the category of monoids? Eric said, it's the one where there's no choice. What would it look like? Imagine a monoid where there's no choice. The, the nature of it is it forces there to be only one mapping. There's only one possible mapping by the rules of functors themselves. Could it also be the object with only the identity? Yes, it can be. So here, the initial object and the terminal object are the what? They're the same. The same. Same. They're the same object as initial and terminal. And in fact, Eugenia Chang says that when that's the case, look at top of page 221, a null object in a category is one that is both terminal and initial. Mm -hmm. um, and then she says, um, uh, so in the example of sets, terminal objects are often generically written as one, and initial objects as zero. Thus, a null object arises where zero equals one <laughs> in a category. Um, the slightly shocky equation alerts us to a fact that category with a null object behaves differently in some critical, uh, crucial ways. Um, uh, and she says, arguably, the null object for groups is and monoids, it's one of the things that makes the category of groups such a rich and interesting place in which to develop algebraic techniques. Um, and, and that in turn is why so many branches of the math have advanced by putting the word algebraic in front of them, making some sort of connection with group theory, um, like monoids, groups. Remember, groups are, groups are like monoids with, anyone remember, like a group compared to just a plain old monoid? They're, they're super close cousins. What does a group have that a monoid doesn't have? Anyone remember? Inverses Double. for each morphism. Inverses, inverses. And they're just morphisms, right? But but they 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 combine to cancel out the original one. A monoid doesn't, like a free monoid doesn't have that, right? You can't like add one morphism to the other and get back to zero. But some morphism, some some structures do have that. Uh, you could represent as a monoid, uh, or as a, as a structure, like a monoid, the category of, you could represent um, integers, have a, one of them morphisms be minus one, another be one, and when you, well, 
Uh, and, and when you add them together, you get zero. It can be part of the rules of composition for that category. Um, anyway, null objects, ladies and gentlemen, are ones where initial and terminal are the same, which is kind of wild. Okay, so point here is that like we have different, like initial and terminal objects, even with categories where like they're kind of set like, they can sets with structure, they can be kind of kind of a different flavor. Are we okay with that? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Are, are everyone else okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stop this. And I am going to stop this recording. There we go. And